What, um, in terms of the aero side, obviously it's very, very hot right now. Um, you know, there's a lot of activity. What are you seeing right now in, in, in terms of what's happening in the aviation world and, and perhaps how the satellite world and the aviation world are kind of coming together on certain issues? Yeah, as you, as you said, I mean, uh, aeronautical in-flight communication is, is a big topic now in the satellite industry because it's really a very nascent technology, a nascent market, and more and more people are really realizing the market opportunities uh, that, that were there. There were some early trials. Uh, it's, it's not a new topic. It has started already in the, like uh, a couple of 10, 10 years ago or so with connection by Boeing, etc., but mm -hmm. the time was probably not right. Now, many more people in the satellite industry really see that there is a tremendous opportunity, there is tremendous capacity needs, there is uh, a lot of business to be made, that there, is a, there could be a win-win situation for all the satellite operators, the service providers and the airlines themselves who kind of have to reshuffle their business model and go with the trend of passenger connectivity, uh, smartphones, uh, laptops, uh, Wi-Fi connectivity, etc. So I think it's... Uh, it's really shaping up and, and we see now the technology mature enough to be ready to go on board airplanes and to really provide services uh, that are useful for the passenger. You, uh, you've been keeping a kind of a close eye on the market in terms of how things will shift out with respect to uh, KU units, KA, uh, what airlines should do, should they take the leap now, should they wait for a global service, what, what are you telling airlines uh, or is, is each individual situation different? Yeah, so you're right, we are at Euroconsult, we come more from the satellite perspective, so we really look at it more from what's what's the market opportunity for satellite in, in the aeronautical or in the in-flight connectivity space. And we're looking at all technologies that are related to satellite, but not only, we also look at air-to-ground and some other technologies. So I think what we're seeing right now is obviously the, the increasing need for bandwidth per passenger, per airplane. Uh, and the number of the applications that need to be supported, like broadband connectivity, web browsing, but even streaming or live TV, um, is more kind of a broadband type application. So traditional L-band solution uh, have a very physical limitation to do those. They could do still some cell phone connectivity, GSM backhauling, or some email traffic through smartphones. But to get a real broadband experience on board a plane, I think you need higher bandwidth solutions, which as you said, was is more the KU, KA band uh, technologies that come. We at Euroconsult think that both of them uh, will kind of coexist, that there will be gro a tremendous growth, I think, in both of them, both in number of internal terminals and also in capacity usage. Um, probably the advantage of KU band today is that there is a a lot of KU band available already, including over the ocean. There's much more to come for uh, transatlantic, transpacific flights, but also over the land masses, obviously. Um, and we will have some of those high throughput KU band birds like the Intelsat Epic. I think uh, Telesat with the Vantage is doing something in these directions as well. And, and we might see others in the future coming up. So there will be more capacity, so to say, per airplane available. Um, that said, Obviously, there is already a lot of use for Cuban for other applications, including TV and, and uh, uh, fixed telecom V sets, etc. So, and there is a limited amount of spectrum available. So today, that's why only the, the big global players are, are able to offer multi-spot KU band uh, broadband over the oceans. Mm -hmm. And KA band is more of a, uh, I would say, nascent frequency band in terms of deployment. So there is much more. Um, spectrum available and that's why people can bring up those birds with just huge amounts of capacity. So I think in the long run to really support these high capacity applications, KA band has just more frequency rights but we think that both will coexist and there will be tremendous growth as well in KU band. Oh, very interesting and finally, you know, as you said yourself, the L band, it, it, it supports yeah, certain light connectivity um, and also mobile connectivity um, fairly well, but it's looking like it's moving towards being really a standard for safety services, which seems to me to be to put Inmarsat in a very interesting position um, with respect to if you have okay Swift broadband safety services, then you tack on your KA for the cabin for the passengers. 
Yeah, so, so there's two th different things. There's what we call the cockpit communications, mm -hmm. which is all about safety. But not only, there's also airline operational maintenance efficiency yeah. applications that, that can be done, tracking, monitoring. Uh, uh, all those applications can be supported by Elbin and have been supported for many years by Elbin, mm -hmm. including in Marcel, obviously being the market leader, but also others like Iridium that providing sure. Elbin cockpit services. For the cabin and the passenger, it's probably not the right solution, as I said, in terms of broadband. You, you said that there's some light connectivity solution, mm -hmm. probably some GSM picocell backhauling yeah. or some, some email traffic can, can be supported, but we're not talking about the several MBPS traffic. Um, to combine L-band with, and you know, first of all, we don't think L-band will go away. It's just impossible, the reliability, yeah. the safety requirements, regulation is all moving ahead. That, it will stay in the cockpit forever. In the cabin, it's obviously a different story. But you're right, there could be some nice um, hybrid solutions uh, or mixed packages uh, using L-band in the cockpit or for safety communication or even as a backup solution in terms of uh, KA or KU services are blocked or are kind of have uh, temporary outages or, or difficulties in connecting. Um, and really KU, KA band for the, uh, for the broadband cabin in-flight connectivity experience. Interesting. And uh, actually, just one more question. Would you, you know, the, the big question is who ultimately pays? Because passengers don't want to pay for the service. They want the service, but they don't want to pay for it. Um, do you think airlines are ultimately going to have to foot the bill? Or how, what do you think is going to happen in the terms of the business model? Well, I think as we said earlier in the, in the beginning of the interview, it's uh, it's a very exciting times now. It's a nascent technology, but we see more and more airlines more getting equipped, uh, the service getting running. Uh, what we don't see yet is one defined business model that has come out as a winner. So people today are trying, are uh, testing the market, what can be done, is it the service provider who pays, the, is it the airline who pays, is it the customer who pays, is it a paid service, is it a, is it a free service, how you know do you limit traffic, etc. I think all that has to be experienced now as we get more and more planes equipped, more and more companies experiencing that. Um, I think ultimately, it's like in a hotel, right? You 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 would you don't like to pay, but in certain instances you would pay. Right. In other instances, the airline probably would have to offer that for free to, to guarantee take up rates. But then again, you might end up with congested service, or uh, you might ha having too many passengers using using uh, ba high bandwidth applications at the same time. So I think the next years, the next two three years, until we get really to the next step of those new HDS satellite will really be a kind of market testing phase. Airlines, service providers and operators all together will kind of test the business models and the market and we'll see who will be.